What's going on, guys? Um, just was about to head off to bed and thought there's been so many people congratulating me on the Forged in Fire that uh, I had to go live and do a little thing. So I don't know if anyone's up and around. I don't even know what time it is. Quarter after nine or so. So anyways, um, thought I'd come on here and say thank you to everybody that's been sending congratulations and thank you Brian um I thought I would just answer any questions that people had because I've I don't know I've been getting a lot on Facebook and whatnot and so I thought it would be kind of fun to answer some thank you Mark thank you Fox Run Forge um I was crafty don't know what that means Sorry, Brian, I don't, uh, explain what you mean by that question. Um, so there's still a, a few things that I'm under a, an NDA that I can't talk about, but now that the show has aired, I can talk a, a lot more about some of this stuff. So, Film Guy Craft Services. Oh, um, that's actually fantastic. They, um, hey, Daniel, they were, they were really good, the uh, craft services. I'm, a, I'm thinking you mean the, uh, the food and food trucks and all the behind the scenes stuff is really cool. Do they let you keep the knife or you have to keep it there? Um, they sent Seth his blade. So the second place person gets their blade back. Now that's changed, I think from early on. Um, but they kept mine. So, um, there you go. Uh, yeah, they basically bought mine for, ten thousand dollars although i haven't gotten paid yet so <laughs> maybe they haven't bought it for ten thousand dollars um but yeah as far as the lunches go um they were fantastic the whole pas the production assistants um really worked their butts off and and made sure we were well taken care of with drinks and food and everything and then when it came to uh uh lunches there there were some food trucks or they'd go out and get something i mean they they really did did their best to make sure we were really comfortable and happy and well fed and um it was a lot of fun hey john coffee how are you sir um yeah i love the ink too that was done by uh ohana forge here in traverse city um show you the tap is it gonna be backwards because i'm i'm doing this yeah i think it's backwards maybe it's not backwards i don't know Damn it. Um, guy named Keone is one of the best in the country. Um, I, I truly think he is and could go on and win that um, Ink Master show all he wants, but um, he says he doesn't want to. He's happy doing what he's doing, so it's really cool, but um, I love the tat that he did, and I'm not a tattoo guy. Not backwards. Cool. Um, I'm not a tattoo guy at all. Um, show the tattoo again? All right. I actually had this done uh, a long time ago. I heard host Will is a chain smoker. Um, I honestly did not see Will smoke once while we were there. Um, he may be a chain smoker, but I didn't see him smoke. So, um, what did I see Will doing? He was eating Pop Tarts one morning, <laughs> and uh, I called him out on that because he's you know this big buff army guy and. Uh, I called him out saying, you're not supposed to be eating Pop-Tarts, you're supposed to be eating fruit or vegetables or something. He says, uh, breakfast of champions, motherfucker. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that was well. He, he was a character, that, that's for sure. Um, well, Doug was uh, generally, genuinely what you see. Doug and um, Dave Baker were both genuinely who you see on the TV show. I mean, they were super nice. The judges aren't allowed to hang out with you um, between shooting and stuff because, you know, they can't... If they got to know someone better or, or befriended someone more, then he can always claim, oh, it's, it's you know, they're not being fair in their judging. But um, every time Dave Baker would walk past, he'd say hi and chat with everybody in the group for, you know, a couple of minutes and then move on. So um, Doug was the same way. Um, just genuinely nice people. 
Uh, it was great to see someone who I've seen as a bit of a YouTube mentor go on and just crush it like that, inspiring and motivated. Brian, thank you so much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad my YouTube videos have helped people. Um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It, it was one of the most fun experiences of my life. Even if I didn't win, I think I would still chalk it up as one of the most fun experiences of my life because... Um, at this point, I mean, I, I haven't seen a check. I haven't seen the money. I don't know when it's coming. I don't know if it's coming. They tell me it is, but, um, I can still say, I can still look back at it and say, that was one of the most fun experiences of my life. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. And if anyone's considering doing it, I would suggest you do it. I don't know how much longer the show's going to last. I mean, I don't know how long do reality shows last. They all have a, a point where they reach their peak and they fade away. So I would suggest if anyone's thinking about doing it, you know, send it's some some email that you can send a uh, a request off to and they'll tell you how to apply. It's, I don't even remember. Um, if you need the email, I've got it written down somewhere, but get a hold of me and uh, I'll be glad to do it. But I'd say do it. Go for it. You will have a blast. Even Joseph, who, you know, Joseph went out in round one. Uh, great kid. And I still think he had a lot of fun. I mean, we've the the guys and I have been kept in contact throughout. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think even Joseph had fun, um, even though he may not have done as well as he wanted to in round one. But um, I've been telling everybody, you put us all four of us back in that competition right now today and have us go at it again, and the results could be completely different. And Joseph may come out on top, or Stephen may come out on top. Um, I mean, it, it's that stressful and that crazy and, and that weird and wild, and you don't know what's going to happen. A little bit of luck goes this way or that way, and everything could be all blown to pieces of your plan. So, anyways, how long did you have to wait to get on the show? Um, it was uh, a number of months. I think I applied in October knew I was going by December and then it was maybe February or so before they gave me an actual date to fly out there. So it was, it was a number of months. Um, and between what you have to do to, to apply there, there's some interviews, some phone interview, video interview, um, and things like that. So it takes a little bit. There's a background check. They, you know, they don't want to put a child rapist on there or anything. So, um, they do a background check on you. Um, and that just takes a while, but, um, it, it went relatively quick. I knew within a couple of months, three months, four months, something like that, when I was going. And then, you know, it was a couple months later and things like that. Um, did they pay for air for enlarging it? Said, yeah, absolutely. They uh, put us up in, I can't remember the name of the hotel, uh, Hilton maybe. Um, they give you a per diem so that your food is covered and things like that. They they pay for your flight from wherever you're flying to. They pick you up at the airport. They take you to the hotel. The hotel's paid for. They cover your food. Um, like, I think breakfast was, we got a breakfast at the hotel. And it was, you know, it was a continental breakfast, but it was a really good one. They actually had chefs there cooking stuff. It was different every morning. And then you got a, you got fed throughout the day at the studio. And then they gave you a per diem to cover dinner. Because by the end of the day, you were back in the hotel um doing your thing so you know it was enough to get pizza or eat down at the the hotel restaurant or whatever when did you film because it's usually supposed to come within 110 days um i know nothing about 110 days i've never heard that brian we filmed um it was a, it was a while a year and three months something like that so um yeah i don't know that that 110 days maybe maybe that's the average of when they come but supposed to i don't I don't know anything about that. Um, you just got to be patient and wait until they're ready to show your episode. So, um, Billy, have you heard anything else? Okay, that's the Billy. They might do it with 180. Can you give a brief of the blades you made? Sorry, I missed it. No TV at my place. Uh, Daniel, um, the show was uh, Blackbeard's Cutlass, and the first weapon, first blade, was a pirate boarding axe, which... I've made one axe in my life. It was this big Damascus thing. It was a commission piece that I lost a ton of money on because the guy weaseled out at the end of it. But it was very similar 
the the shape of this hatchet that I made was very similar to this pirate boarding axe. So I kind of had that on my side. Um, and I don't know what the other guys, you know, their experience with axes were, but that was definitely more of a challenge. I was going in hoping it was going to be a buoy or something I'm familiar with. And, um, of course they give you something completely different. Um, I am next year or maybe after that. All right, Billy, go for it, man. Um, like I said, I mean, go in knowing it's it's not a forging show. You need to know how to forge, but it's a problem-solving show. Um, there's some guy I've been uh, going and checking the, the Forged in Fire website or uh, Facebook page, and there's some guy on there who's giving me flack, to, telling me I half-assed it and I'm a wannabe um, because I didn't do a Damascus blade or something. I don't know what his problem is with me. But, I mean, the the whole point of the show is they give you a... A test they give you these parameters you have to figure out you have to solve how you're gonna do what they want you to do within the time limit following those parameters so um, that's what it is it's a problem-solving show so know how to forge before you go but practice your problem-solving because that's what it's really all about is you know we had the uh, the little coins they had to forge well together if you don't know how to forge well if you don't know how to clean your steel, it's going to be more difficult than if you do. Um, obviously, making axes, we didn't really have a have a whole lot of experience with that. I don't think any of us did, so they were all a bit rough. But um, it's problem solving. It's figuring out how to do that within the time frame, and then the cutlass, obviously. So, um, do, 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 do. where are we? They finally addressed the annealing process this season. Do, do, do. Um, did they address the annealing process? I don't know. I know all the tempering is done off off camera. Um, I mean, we we did our axes in our three hours, and that's literally what you get. I mean, what you see is what you get as far as the time limit goes. And then they say, hurry up and wait. And then they throw them in the oven, and they temper them. And then you get another three hours to do the handles. And, I mean, it really is. It's about as real as reality TV gets. I think, and, and I apologize for swearing. I was watching the show, and I swore on TV. They blooped me, but that was pretty interesting. Uh, John Norwood talked about how much of a good time it was. Yeah, John, it was it was awesome. Uh, no idea. Uh, counter lost two hundred dollars. Okay, you guys are dealing with that. Um, Hey, Justin, how are you? I'm just answering any questions you guys have. I just wanted to, to do a big group thank you to everybody that's been sending their congratulations because it's been, it's literally been overwhelming. I woke up this morning and I had 348 Facebook notifications from people sending messages, congratulations and whatnot, and then a bunch more on YouTube. And it's just been, it's been crazy. And I've been trying to answer each one individually and between work and real life and whatnot it's it's been near impossible so i just thought doing a quick quick video to say thanks to everybody and answer any questions everybody had would be really cool um my pleasure daniel let's see okay the tempering was never addressed before this season and i'm glad they did as all. oh i got you um yeah i mean I, they don't talk about it a whole lot but um i think enough people have said hey what's with the tempering that they they at least mention it now. Hey, now that your blades have been tempered, we're doing this. Um, I can tell you that you, you see the parameters they give you on the blades. You know, um, your blade has to be at least 9 to 13 inches. Can't be over 22 inches. Can't be over 22 inches. It's always 22 inches because that's how big the uh, tempering of it is. There. I thought that was kind of funny when I found that out. Um, any out of... Ex Pocket expenses while filming. Uh, yeah, there was, um, if you take luggage, you know, you pay the airport fees for luggage and parking and things like that, but you send your receipts in and then they'll cover it. So you have to pay for that, but then they'll reimburse you for that. But everything else is that $35 per diem. And I think I got that before I went. I'm pretty sure, um, $35 per day, and it was four or five days for 
for the actual contest, and I think I got that per diem before I went. So all of that was covered. And then, um, like I say, everything else, your transportation there to most of your meals besides dinner um, were covered by the show um, while you were there. And so that, that $35 per diem was really, it just covered your dinner. And I didn't lose any money going and, and filming the show, if, if that helps. Um, let's see, where are we? Will the episode be on YouTube? I probably, I think, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not in charge of YouTube or Forged in Fire when it comes to YouTube. So not positive, but I would guess if all the other episodes have made it on the YouTube, then um, this one will. There's technically History Channel doesn't put them on YouTube, but other people will record them and change the aspect ratio or something um, so that it can get put up there. Or whatnot. So it, it's probably well, there you go. Monkey with Hammer says it's up now. Um, okay. Any other questions? Any other? Any other? Any other? What else can I tell you about the show? Um, Northwoods Forge, Dave McConnell. See, there, there's another Forged and Fire guy. He knows. He knows all the secrets. Um, although when Dave went, they were filming it in Brooklyn. And I don't they're doing it in Connecticut now, which was kind of interesting. Connecticut. They call it Connecticut. I mean, you're you're in Connecticut, but they still drive like they're freaking New Yorkers. I can't. I'm from northern Michigan. I'm not used to that. So, I mean, just I was white knuckling it on the dashboard. <laughs> well, the, I forgot the guy's name that drove me from the airport to the hotel. But, I mean, he was zooming in and out of traffic five lane freeways and it was uh it was killer <laughs> that was that was wild um what else can i tell you about the show um if you want to do it it's a it's a whole lot of hurry up and wait a lot of people don't realize that two-handed colors yeah uh you know why i did that heath um who was it that told me? Someone told me to look at how Dave holds saber-type weapons. And I forgot who it was. And I did. I went back and watched um, how Dave held saber-type weapons. And there were a lot of times where Dave would stick his thumb out like that. And I was thinking, if the guard's there... And his thumb is out. I've got to make that handle extra long. Most people wrap their thumb around and hold it like that. But um, there were a few episodes where I saw Dave holding it like that. And I thought, I better make enough room for him to do that if he's going to hold it like that. And that's why that handle was so long. The The railroad spike was just a little bit longer, too, just to, to give it the balance that I wanted it to have. But uh, I had I had reason, and they cut it all out. They left that all on the editing floor. I had it all reasoned out from the very beginning, um, but they didn't put any of that in the final edit. So I thought that was kind of funny. Um, sponsored a driver for NASCAR, no joke. Yeah, that, they drive like freaking maniacs. Um... I somehow knew you won or thought you did. Well, lots of people thought I did. I really tried not to give anything away. That was, I will tell you this, it was the hardest thing to do not to talk about the show and then not to give any kind of clue what happened on the show. Um, it was it was a long year and three months that I couldn't say anything. Um, there were a very select handful of people that were allowed to know, um, you know, some family, um, my bosses at work and, you know, just a very select few friends that I trusted. Um, but other than that, no one else had any clue. Um, some of you all remembered, I, I did a video a long time ago saying, Hey, I think I'm going to try out for the show. And that was it. After that, when I made it, they make you sign the, the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement. And so I couldn't say another word about it. And, um, yeah, so it was, it was a long time. A few of you guessed, oh, I think your vacation is to be on Forged in Fire. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's one of those. It's a hard thing to do, I'll tell you, until you're actually doing When you talk for a living, you know, I host a radio show. I talk for a living. And to not be able to talk about 
what you want to talk about is uh, that's a toughie. Uh, let's see. Let's see the tattoo again. All right. Uh, Ohana Tattoo in Traverse City did this one. Came up with the design of taking the Forged in Fire and using the, the sword from the logo for the eye. And uh, I think I'm going to go back and get Season 6, Episode 28 underneath that. But um, a guy named Keone did that. And truly, I think he's one of the best in the world. I mean, it is a freaking awesome tattoo. And I'm not even a tattoo guy. This is only my second one. And probably my last one, but um, he just did awesome. Uh, let's see. He loved the handle. If it was all big in the eye, yeah. I don't know if he loved it or not. I, it was hard for me to read Dave. I I was really trying to figure out where his mind was. Um, like on that test when he was chopping the peg leg, that was really cool. Telling you that, watching it in slow motion and seeing how much that sword was. Wong, 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 wong. And it didn't take a bend and it held up to that just to think that something I made and heat treated and tempered and I got it right to the point where it could do that and still stay true. Um, that was pretty cool. So it took that little roll, but um, it, that was really awesome. And then to, to see Seth, you know, do that, it literally was when, when the, the dummies... When they were chopping the dummies, I was like, dang, I might have a shot at winning this thing. I, I seriously didn't think I did. But uh, chopping the dummies, when they did that, my brain was like, I might I might have a shot at winning this. This is pretty good. Um, Seth didn't do as good as me. But then on that strength test, um, I took a little roll, and it took a couple of chops to get through the bones, and I just didn't feel like I did as well. And... Um, and so I thought, well, now we're, we're pretty even. And so it all came down to that last test. And um, and when Seth, I wish his sword had cut that rope. That would have been the ultimate test. Which one of us would have won if his sword had cut that rope? When he when his sword bounced off that rope, that's when I knew I probably have this. It's probably mine. And it's because of that. And if Doug had hit the rope right where my blade rolled, it would have bounced off too. And so it was one of those, I just, I wonder who would have won if his sword had cut that rope. But um, be that as it may. I mean, uh, one of the things I would love to see Forged and Fire do this, and I mean, I'm just a guy, they're not going to listen to me, but I would love to see him take all four contestants from a single show and take them back and give them the exact same challenge with the exact same parameters and to see how things would play out differently. Because if I went back and I faced Seth and Stephen and, and Joseph, um, I mean, Joseph literally got the short end of the stick. I mean, a young kid, it was hot, and, and I mean, he just, he just didn't do well. But he's progressed so much between then and now. He knows what he did wrong. And would he come in there with a complete different mindset? Seth could easily win. Stephen could easily win. Joseph could easily win. I could easily win again. And so, I mean, to put us all four back in the same same scenario, I think would be interesting. Now, I don't know if it would be good TV, and I doubt Forged and Fire would ever do it, but um, I, I hit him up with the idea. We'll see, maybe. Um, I'm sure there are some better, you know, go back all the way to season one, and there are probably some really good season one contests that you could replay with the same Smiths as long as they all agreed to come back. Um, that would be really interesting TV to see how they did. I know Dave would love. Dave, you still there, Dave? I know he would love to, to get back on there and uh, smack some people around and win that. Uh, 5160 is the beast. Um, yeah, I really like it, Heath. It's, it's a pretty dang good steal for what it is. The, the thing I like about it most is it's so forgiving in the heat treat. Um, you know, hey, is my knife for death on tonight? I think it is, isn't it? I'm on that show too. Um, the thing is they never called me to tell me. I think it's on at 10 maybe. Um, you don't have to watch that one. I didn't do any good. I, 
I'm not a I'm not a knife chopper guy. I just make the damn things. Um, but they they put me on there and said have fun. So I did, and it was a, a fun time. But um, yeah, I'm on knife for death, and I think it's tonight, maybe. Um, but yeah, fifty one sixty is uh, I love it. How forgiving it is. So um, whether you have a heat treating oven or not. It really is a, a decent steel to work with. That there are better steels, but some of them are a little more particular in in what you have to do. Uh, yeah, Dave would go back in a heartbeat, as would I, Dave. I mean, I I would love to go back, even if I was, even if I knew going in, I was never gonna win. I was never gonna get past round one. I would still go back in a heartbeat because it was so much fun, and uh, I'd love to do it again. So, anyways, my phone's about to die, guys, so um, I can't go too much longer. I've not had, a watch to, not had a chance to watch you on Forge yet. have to wait till I make it back to Detroit, but congrats on your win. Thank you. Uh, gotta go. God bless. Thank you, Fox Run Forge. Thank you, Dave. Um, my phone battery just said, hey, your phone's about to die, so... Anyways, I just wanted to come on here, guys, and say thank you so much um, for all of the congratulations and all of the support over the years. And, um, you know, it's, it's meant the world to me. And everybody, I still can't believe how many people were trying to get a hold of it. They're still, I mean, it, they're still pouring in. There's, I've got 23, I just checked it before I started this video. Um, I've got 23 Facebook things I've got to go respond to, uh, three friend, friend requests, uh, private messages. I mean, it, they're just pouring in. And um, I don't know. It's just it's humbling and overwhelming to think that that many people watched me, enjoyed it. And I don't know. I just it will be like that for weeks. No, I, I Dave, I was really hoping it would die off by tomorrow or the weekend so hopefully you're wrong although someone told me dave maybe you can talk to this is um when they show them overseas because the they i guess they haven't shown in england and australia and over in europe and stuff and when they do um i guess it all starts over again but with all the people from britain and australia and stuff so i don't know it's just nuts and you know i've already got a few knife orders out of it just from people wanting to buy knives from me. So uh, I do encourage you to go check out the work of my competitors, Stephen and Seth and Joseph, because what you saw on that show is not a representation of what they do. What, what you saw on the show is not a representation of what I do. I mean, it's making a knife under those conditions, making a boarding axe under those conditions is, is completely different than, than what, I do or all the other guys do when you're given the time to do it right and to do what you want to do. So um, I've, I've been trying to encourage people all along to go visit their Facebook pages and their websites and things like that as well. Um, Cause I mean, you'll see what they're really capable of, not just, Hey, we threw you into the show. Maybe your problem solving techniques weren't quite up to par this day. Maybe, maybe it was just a bad turn of luck something happened um you, you never know with these shows they're they're tv but um go check them out and and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised um joseph i mean joseph is making you know the kid goes out in the round one he's doing um cutlass like uh reenacting um civil war sabers and things like that and that's what he's focusing on uh, the kid is fantastic so um Anyways, I, uh, my phone is yelling at me big time. Dang it, Heath, why are you giving me money, man? Don't do that, brother. Um, peace and love. I mean it, but, um, no, save, save your bread. Give it to people who need it. Or buy something from me. That would make it cool. Um, re-airs will spike all that over. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Anyways, um, you did a great job watching it right after I got home. Yeah, that was another one. I was at a watch party last night and uh, couldn't see the show, so I actually had to come home from work and watch it again on demand on cable to uh, to actually see it, to know what I said, to hear what the judges said about my work and whatnot. So that was kind of interesting. 
Everybody else in the country seemed to have seen the show before I actually had a chance to really see it. Um, but anyways, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be glad to do this again. Um, but if you're thinking about trying out for the show, I really do suggest that you um, that you do it. I mean, I, who the hell knows how much longer the show's going to be on. Like I say, TV shows have a have a lifespan usually, unless you're The Simpsons or Family Guy. But um, most of them will only last a certain number of years, and then they're gone. So don't wait too much longer, because you don't know. This is, we're in season six. They're filming season seven right now. Are they going to film a season eight? As long as the advertisers keep buying it, but what if they don't? So um, if you're thinking about it, go do it. I, You'll have a blast. Even if you don't win, you'll have so much fun doing it. Um, so go give it a shot. All right. You're still coming out in September. Uh, that's the plan as of right now, John Coffee. Although I've got to put the butt in there. There's some stuff going on at work that may keep me here. Um, it all depends. Um, I just had a big meeting today and... Depending on the outcome of what that meeting happens, there may be some things in the works that have to keep me here for this year. I don't know. That's the best I can give you right this second. As of right this second, yes, I'm still coming out. But that might change. When you came up, take a look. I sent you some pictures. If you get time, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, Billy, I've, I've looked at your pitch. I'm sorry I haven't had uh, time to respond. Um, they're looking good. Um, I mean, they're, they're still a little rough around the edges in some areas, but um, overall, I think your fit and finish is, is decent, man. Uh, you're getting there. I, I definitely think um, you're improving with every, every knife you make, brother. So um, keep it up and keep going and um, work on one thing at a time would be the, the suggestion that I give you when you, when you make a knife and, um, you know, say this one, I'm focusing on the bevels. The bevels are going to be the best bevels I've ever made. Boom. The next one, the Hanson, I'm going to get the finish, the best I've ever made. The next one, take it one step at a time, one little piece at a time, baby steps. And uh, baby step your way along, and before you know it, you'll be making some uh, super quality knives that uh, people will be paying a lot of money for. So, guarantee you. Anyways, uh, got to go, guys. Thank you again, and uh, I will catch you next time. I don't remember how to end videos. I think I hit that, right? Okay.